from like 9,000 net worth in their favor back towards 2,000 net worth. They tightened up, found their moments, and uh, really Five seemingly played remain. perfectly after that one uh, sort of mess up. And now we're into game two with them hoping to move on to the winner's finals going 2-0. Yeah, they're, they're certainly looking good. Uh, quite a different draft here already. Uh, Grimstroke and Lich both making it through into the pool and Aster prioritizing picking the Jug first. Um, a lot of things getting shifted around because now we have the Tusk ban, whereas it got picked in the previous game. Um, and EG, I guess, thinking about whether or not they want the, the Grimstroke-Lich combination or if they want crit maybe on... Uh, another melee remaining. support or something in this situation. See what they go for. Five seconds remaining. You don't want you don't want to let them have the lich. Lich plus jug is just such a strong lane. Uh, it's really really difficult to deal with. So yeah, it's one of the most volatile co combinations there is. It's just yeah, so good. Um, it really the lich with anybody who can kind of get on top of you and I'm you know you see this early anti mage blink he is one of those guys too that I think like you get yeah. that frost shield on on you and you blink in it makes you it gives you that opportunity to be hyper aggressive yeah it's it's really scary i mean we even see people buy boots first on jug when they've got the lich Ladies as their laning partner because it's just so easy to get kills and okay this time around it is going to be eg taking the earth spirit i mean we talked about how uh good boboka's earth spirit is but uh crit is no slouch on the hero either um definitely like among the i would say what probably top five uh on the hero in the entire game so looking forward to seeing what he can get done here and nice again when you've got the i mean lich has some lockdown now with the sinister gaze but it's not that long range so being able to have the the silence and the stun from the earth spirit gonna be pretty useful here and well they don't get the lich but grimstroke also quite a good combination here uh with the juggernaut and gives them the opportunity to pick up a doom or one of these other big single target alts uh, if they want, we've seen just how strong that can be in the past. I do like this Earth Spirit Lich combination, though. You put the Frost Shield on top of uh, Earth Spirit, and he rolling boulders in. You're getting a lot out of that really quickly. This whole from the boulder smash on top of that, the rolling boulder coming in, Frost Shield. Five like seconds. You could definitely play around with that and play uh, possibly a tri lane. Maybe they Five go to someone in the remain. off lane who is good by himself. We saw Tide in the last yep. game play uh, by himself early. Um, and then they did end up Radiant making a couple rotations to help him out he, as he had died uh, a couple times. But maybe we see EG go to an off laner that's going to try and lane by himself. Yeah, could be. Off lane pools already starting to get picked away at a little bit here uh, through the draft. Beastmaster getting banned again. Um, the Centaur now getting removed from the pool. Uh, what else do we still have? The Brewmaster is still reasonably popular. Um, Five seconds I guess we'll have remaining. to see what they what they go for here. The one thing that could be a little bit scary for EG is if Aster go for an aggro tri lane, uh, similar to what they did in the previous game, uh, because they do have, I would say, I mean, we haven't seen the third hero for either side just yet, but I would say that Aster, so far looking like they might have the, the slightly stronger tri lane versus tri lane, Earth Spirit's not particularly amazing in tri v tri, and the big problem there as well would be that uh, Aster would then prevent the Earth Spirit from being able to go around and get things done if he's just forced to uh, sit there in that lane. So, you probably have to pick fairly independent laners, and that, that goes along with what you were just saying about yes, picking somebody that can sort of just hunker down in the off lane by themselves. Uh, and if it come, if push comes to shove, they could maybe rotate that hero to face up against the aggro tri lane, just try and swap the lanes around a little bit. Mm -hmm. And they ban out the Medusa, they ban out the Phantom Assassin offlaners that have, uh, you know, you've lost the Centaur, you've lost the Beastmaster in terms of offlaners. Um, uh, could we see Tide again for EG? Remaining. Or maybe like an Enigma? Mm. Yeah, and Enigma, Enigma could work. I think they need to see a couple other heroes first before they, uh, they make that decision. Um, I don't know if Tide is necessarily great in this spot for them. Uh, Aster are reasonably good at dealing with Tide Hunter. Like the the Phantom from Grimstroke can be kind of annoying. 
Uh, it's a, you're not that great against Jug. He's got enough magical damage in the early game to kill you with spin, and then he's got a lot of ways to dodge the Ravage uh, later on in the game. So we'll, we'll see what happens. If EG want to play really, really fast, we could still maybe see something like the Nature's Prophet coming out as well, which would be you know, a little bit of a change from their usual style. I feel like they do normally have S4 on these uh, sort of melee initiators more than anything, but... Uh, who knows what they have up their sleeve at the moment, right? Again, we've been saying that we haven't really, haven't really seen a whole lot of them for the last little bit. Yeah, with their with their last uh, series before this being just the qualifiers for this event, whereas Team Master, yeah. of course, have played H Cup, they've played DPL, they've been involved a lot. They've, um, you know, really starting, and I think they participated even in that H Cup that they didn't do too well in, and maybe tried to play around a little bit with their lineups. I think it was more just to get Love You, Love Me a little bit more acquainted with the team. And because um, uh, obviously the KO Major is something to look back on where that was his first event with the team and they didn't really do as well as maybe they would have hoped. And they are definitely a team that could be uh, top three at the event if they play and put everything together. For sure. So we do get this, this Nature's Profit pick. I was just talking about it. I think it's a pretty good Nature's Profit game here. It's just... It's decent against the Jug, having all of the, the Treants is a little bit annoying for him. Um, and Aster wastes absolutely no time after seeing the Nature's Prophet, just going to pick up the Sven. Uh, looks like it might just be sort of your yeah, position 3 or 4 Sven this game. And EG's sensing an opportunity to just play really, uh, really fast, really aggressive. Take some fast buildings this game. He's going to pick up the Terrorblade as well. And that was something that we saw affect Aster in the last game was how quick EG were able to move. And it did get slowed down yeah. a little bit with how effective Bobica was on that Earth Spirit. But come the 12, 13, 14 minute mark, they were starting to move around and, and pressure these towers. And this is a lineup again that might be able to do the same thing. Sven picked up here looking like he's going to be more in the off lane position this time around with the Juggernaut picked up first by Aster. But definitely with the Jug as well as the Sven, two good heroes to throw that Ink Swell on and maybe blink on the Sven, blink Ink Swell on top of him, get the Storm Hammer, and then, you know, Ink Swell pops after the Storm Hammer is about to run out. You get a lot of lockdown time for this team. Yeah. I, I do feel a little bit like the draft from Aster. I mean, they've been forced onto the back foot a lot they're really reacting to what eg are doing uh the one thing that i will say that's really different this game from the previous game is that they do have one quite a bit more deep push uh in the form of the grimstroke and the phoenix especially and they've got way better building push than they had uh, in the previous game in the form of the juggernaut so they've got more options in terms of how they want to play uh it's a similar situation where i feel like now with the phoenix pick they've also got slightly better team fight potentially with eg but nature's prophet is such a scary hero especially if you play him as a core because he just enables pushes in a way that almost no other hero really does like you you can see tier two towers being taken at like seven or eight minutes because the nature's prophet tp'd in at the right time with remaining. level three treants and they pushed with the catapult and you know the other team just wasn't ready for it at all and that can be a huge advantage uh, to take those buildings so early. And then they've got the Terrorblade on top of that. So Aster are going to have to be really careful about how they approach uh, this early game. They're, they've got strong heroes. They'll, I think they'll have good lanes, but they have to watch out for this Nature's Prophet and, and his movement and like his potential plays in the early game. I think yesterday I saw Universe playing the Nature's Prophet. Didn't go as well as uh, me and Trent thought it was. But this lineup, uh, having the Terror Blade, having mobility from the Earth Spirit, it might, I think, when you can line up mobility with Nature's Prophet and Earth Spirit to maybe go in on a couple of these heroes, be aggressive in that way, could go a lot better than uh, what I saw from forward gaming in the previous day. But they banned the Pugna. Kunku gets banned last by EG. And fifth pick here for Aster. We'll see what they're going to want to go with over in what seems to be the mid lane. Yeah, um... So nothing too susceptible to Earth Spirit ganks. Um, like if they want to just be kind of boring and save, something like a, a Dragon Knight feels just fine um, in this situation. No, they're going to go for the OD again. All right. So they're just going to be relying on, again, they want the team, the combination of like team fight superiority 
uh, and having, I guess, a slightly better late game. But OD is a slightly slow hero, so they are going to have to rely on D push from the Grimstroke and the Phoenix. And I think it's going to be really important for Aster this game that their supports get levels. They've picked two, well, it depends whether, uh, I think it depends whether like Sven is three or Phoenix is three. But it's going to be really important that their supports get levels because they're going to be the ones who have to fight off EG uh, in the early to mid game. And oh, this is a really nice puck pick. They, they don't have good lockdown for it really at all. And uh, EG needed a little bit more control because, like I said, they've got, uh, you know, they've got S4 looking like he's going to be playing the Nature's Prophet. So he's normally the primary initiator, but uh, Sumail's got this puck up his sleeve and really looking forward to seeing him play at this game actually it's also just so strong against od uh, the silences this game i think are gonna make it pretty brutal for lover to do anything the puck also gives them just a very mobile lineup with yeah illusory orb as well as the nature's Pro profit able to tp in and, and the rolling boulder coming out there's definitely potential for a lot of good setup Ten from eg in this game remaining. yeah okay so it is uh Five Wait, is this a, this a Baboka Jug? What's going on here? Silar's picked Sven. I guess so, Baboka yeah. It's Offlane Phoenix. Yeah, I don't, I don't mind the Offlane Phoenix, but I really thought that it would be... I really thought that it would be for Sven. Over I, don't, I don't really like either of their carries. This game, like either of their carry options, necessarily either the Sven or the Jug, it looks like a really difficult game for both of those two heroes. Like you're gonna get, like you were saying, the EG lineup is really mobile and there are just so many ways to kite. They've got the Frost Shield for protection. They're gonna have Treants everywhere. They've got the Sprout. The TB is really high armor. There's gonna be the Dream Coil from the Puck. It just feels to me like it's gonna be one of those games where uh, Sven especially is going to be just kited to the ends of the earth. Jug deals with it slightly better which is why i thought that maybe the jug would end up being the position one uh but i guess aster just want want silar on on the sven this game so it's but gonna I like be... eg's more. yeah it's gonna be an interesting game too uh i do like eg's lineup as well uh, a lot better than aster's and I'm, t I'm interested to see how a four position jug works out Unless uh, there's something they didn't tell us in possibly Bobica moving up to the one spot, but I don't think that's the case. No, I, I don't. I don't know what he's gonna do. Here, he's just got a. Wait. So is yeah. Is is XXS playing like a support Phoenix or what's what's going on here? I guess we'll have to see. I mean, I know that XXS is a he's a good Phoenix player, but. This is this is certainly weird. The other thing I don't really like about Aster's lineup is I feel like they didn't really uh, take much advantage of the Grimstroke this game. Like they haven't really picked a whole lot of strong synergy for the Soulbind. Sure, they've got well, like Stormhammer and uh, of course Grimstroke's own uh, Phantom's Embrace, but that's about it. They're not really utilizing it that much. At least yeah. until the much later game where maybe OD picks up a hex or something like that. But, uh, hmm. And they will have. I, I wish uh, they'd picked around the Grim a little bit more. A double Astral as well, but yeah, it seems to be. I mean, how be... useful is that, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like... It's, like, it's like more if you need to run, you Soulbind and Astral. Try and just get away. But even just the Soulbind yeah. is usually enough. Silar. Staying up towards top, I'm I'm very just interested to see what's gonna happen here with Bovica. He's on this jug and well nobody's nobody else is here bottom just yet. But yeah, XSS. Okay, XSS is making the rotation towards bottom and actually Bobica's going over towards top. So they might be looking for a trialing with Silar, Fenrir, and Bobica. And that's going to be Jug Sven Grimstroke. That's up against the Lich as well as the Terrible. Is that going to work out for Aster? Like, they could definitely be aggressive if they've got, like, Inkswell and Stormhammer. We rely not upon fortune. So we'll see. His fly is not anywhere close to safety at the moment. And there's the Blade Fury. Stroke of Fate will be first from Fenrir. It might be first blood, but it's... 
the frost shield that helps him slow down these enemy heroes and get away. Boboku, did he just get body blocked a little bit by Silo? I think? Like, yeah. Like, well played by, uh, well played by Fly. Kind of faked them out a bit, going back the opposite direction uh, with the frost shield. But uh, I, thought, I thought they were gonna get that kill. This is this is weird. For sure. And now Boboka is TPing bottom with no mana. Uh, what is he up to? Is he just gonna run poles? Looks like that's the plan. It's onto him though. Yeah, this is so bizarre. <laughs> I really, I'm, I'm, I feel so lost. I've never seen this from Aster. It definitely seems like something maybe went wrong in the drafting phase where they're just like, well, Boboka, you're playing a four position jug, but even then, this doesn't look like a lane where he's playing four position jug. Yeah, it looks like they were like, oh, we really like the Phoenix against the Terrorblade. That's our go to like TB you. counter. So let's do that. And then had to kind of figure out afterwards how everything was going to work. And they're still playing musical lanes now. Like Fenrir's now come down bottom, but it does just seem like XXS is sort of playing the four position here. To me, the really telling thing will be whether or not he actually buys any wards this game or if it's just going to fall to Fenrir to be like a really hard six position and they're just kind of playing uh, greedy with four cores. But yeah, this is this is odd. I guess maybe one way to look at it is maybe Silar is playing three and then like, who knows? This, this is strange. They're letting XXS farm right now. Silar is just like punching fly on the on the sidelines, so it does seem like they've deprioritized the the Sven. And what's weird is Bobica picked last, didn't he? He locked in last. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. So you're not allowed to swap anymore. And so if Silar autopiloted and picked Sven, and then they actually wanted to play Sven position four, like they wanted Bobica to play it, then they would be forced to adjust like this and just swap roles. Like, Silar would have to play four. It looks like he's like dead right now. Yeah, first blood coming out for Arteezy with that first metamorphosis. And it's Silar in a bit of an odd position. Got XSS here with the crown early, but this is really difficult for them to stay in the lane with the Lich, as well as the metamorphosis right now on Arteezy, just doing a lot of damage on XSS. They got the kill on a Silar. The Storm Hammer comes out. But let's see how much they're really even able to get here onto this Terra Blade. Icarus Dive comes across. Frost Shield placed onto the Terra Blade. Fly just working with the tools that he's got and just constantly harassing with the Frost Blast and then having that uh, Frost Shield to keep Arteezy alive. Yes, this top lane seems to be going just fine. TB's farming well. Nature's Prophet's doing really well. Uh, one bright spot for Aster is the, the OD, but he's just going to need so many items this game. 100% needs a BKB to be able to play in fights at all, especially against all the silences. Fenrir dies over bottom. Crit gets the kill. He put the Ink Swell on top of him, as well as the Phantom Embrace on a crit, but it won't be enough to keep him alive. It's now 2 nothing here for EG. I could definitely see this uh, possibly being a quick game in the favor of EG if things start to really fall apart at the seams here for Aster. Yeah, if nothing changes for Aster, I just don't see what they what they do. Like they really they really 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 need their supports to like have good games and be able to fight early on because EG are just monstrous when it comes to early fights and taking objectives after that. Like they're they're already ahead and I could easily see EG taking like all of the tier ones in 15 minutes or even less than that and i just don't know how aster are gonna come back from that position we'll have to see five minutes silar he's doing a good support job right now grabbing these bounty runes right, he's doing the job relatively well as fenrir now in a lot of trouble dead for the second time as it's now three nothing in the favor of eg and bobica he's sitting at 17 and 5 so not Farming too poor. Yeah, he's doing okay. Hasn't really shown what kind of build he's going for just yet. Uh, kind of keeping it up in the air. There's zero opportunity for him to go battle period this game. I think that would just be 
way too greedy. Maybe we'll see like a Yasha or a Maelstrom early on. Oh, or two can tick down, but the stick charge is keeping him alive. And yeah, they got under the tier one. Sour is actually gonna TP over mid to possibly help out. Love you, love me. The Phantom Mary Grace comes out on the crit. They're looking for the ink swell on top of that, but that left Texas has by himself to die over in the top lane. Phantom Mary right clicks away at crit. But there's no way he's catching up to this one. And now it's four to nothing, and the rotation's coming out. Don't turn into anything except for Silar ticking over mid. And let's see where Love You Love Me goes and where Silar's going to move to. This is, uh, I think Silar's just going to head back to the off lane, and Love You Love Me going to keep on farming mid. But uh, yeah, Aster like, he just really lost. Like, XXS with no dive available, just getting completely sold out at top. Uh, he didn't run well, out again. Actually, here. Icarus dives north. That's a very interesting decision, right into the hands of Arteezy. And then Fly's got that sinister gaze locking him up, making it five to nothing. Jug in a lot of trouble. Bobica bottom. Crick comes in. Escort over for the last hit on the Bobica to make it six nothing. Three thousand net worth lead for EG. And again, yeah, Aster just looking very, very lost and. I'm not saying they don't have the heroes to tighten it up, but it definitely looks like a struggle at the moment. It's the Frost 2 plays on an RTZ, but they get the first kill for their team, and it's going to be onto the Terrorblade, so a good target to find, at least. Meanwhile, over mid, Sumail gets Love You Love Me. Soloed. That's the that's the Sumail factor right there. It's really hard for Odie to do anything in this matchup once uh, the puck gets some levels. Oh, no, a lot of pressure Boja again. S4 TP's bottom, and just so much damage on him by crit. S4 comes over and gets yet another kill onto this jug, making it 8 to 1. Oh man, this, this like 10 HP catapult is going to be kept alive here. EG are going to put a lot of pressure on bottom, and Aster aren't responding at all. They, I think they need the Grimstark to come down here and uh, just nuke the wave quickly, finish out the catapult. Otherwise, there's going to be pressure on the, the tier 2 quickly. This is what I was talking about. The Nature's Prophet just creates some otherwise impossible pushes. Aster just putting out fires everywhere. Arteezy actually goes over mid. Sumail is nearby, who doesn't have the Dream Coil. That left the Lich by himself inside the jungle. Silar finds the kill to throw the Storm Hammer out and get his team a second, doubling up that kill count. But again, it's EG. We talked about this in the draft a little bit, and this was before heroes were even picked. How much pressure opportunity there is for EG early in this game. They're going to take this tier too. They've got a Vlad. Arteezy's down here. He's got Metamorphosis. Like, Aster has to... They want to hold this tower. They need to send oh, way mid. more heroes. Silence on a two of these heroes. Love you, love me as well. Siren in a little bit of trouble. They got Warcry out. Sandy's is going to be thrown. Crit gets hit by that as well as S4. The Stroke of Fate on top of them. They might be able to get a support, but Silar, he ends up falling. Two heroes dead on the side of Aster. Now they look over at Fenrir with the chase coming out from the three heroes of EG. Past the tier one, thinking to maybe go under the tier two. The Uzri Orb over, and one more shot from Sumail. Three for nil. EG really pulling away. Aster just don't have any plays to make right now. Like they're, they're just waiting. They need so many more levels on the Phoenix, but XXS can't really threaten this tower at all. So he's trying to trade because he knows they can't win these fights. Silar gets the war cry out and will stay alive for a moment. They get the kill on S4, so that's something going their way. This is a little bit more of EG just over posturing in the middle lane. That led to S4 dying, I think. Yeah, they're getting. Well, got a little bit ahead of themselves, perhaps, yeah. but uh, still. This is looking really, really good. Uh, the pace of the game has been so fast, I didn't even get to talk about what happened at top with XXS like, diving in to try for the turnaround, but it was such a nice sinister gaze from Fly. Like, he was waiting uh, for the moment that the Phoenix was going to try and go for the dive, and then uh, immediately managed to cancel it before any of the fire spirits or anything came out. Really Trains nice. made by S4, the Geomagnetic Rift is going to land on the two, so the Silence of Sauer as well as Fenrir. They've got the Magnetize on top of that, the Ink Swell won't be able to pop the finish off the Grimstroke to start. XXS cleans over with Bobica, who is level 6, so he does have that Omni Slash available. He actually doesn't have the mana for it. He'll clean up S4, the Frost Blast on XSS, and now into the Supernova. Boulder Smash will miss on into Silar, and now they've got the Storm Hammer on top of that. The Omni Slash flies in with the neutrals, mitigating a little bit of that damage. Crit trying to roll Boulder away, but Love You Love Me is there with the actual Imprisonment, and they'll get the kill onto the Earth Spirit. So again, it seems to be a little bit of an overstep from EG, but they get the tier one over mid. Arteezy continuing a free farm bottom, so it's not really that bad. 
Yeah, I, I think that one was okay. The the free death mid from S4 not so great, but uh, EG did get quite a lot out of the map uh, despite losing that fight. And if they really wanted to be, I think if they wanted that to be a serious push, they needed to bring Sumail along. He's really the the core of their team fight for now. He's just stalking Lover. Yeah, it's, mid. might be a little bit too much. He's always waiting for the wrap. Doesn't use Dream Coil yet, and we'll finally let it go and get the kill. I thought he was going to try and hold to onto that as much as he could, and I think he did. Yeah. And once he was almost skating out of vision and maybe getting away into the jungle, he threw that Dream Coil to make sure that he could get the kill. Oh, and an immediate smoke. All right, EG going to try and connect over at top. Just continuing to play a very fast pace of game. And Sumail even going for Boots of Travel first. Like, to me, that just says it all about the, the way that EG are viewing this game Radiant and their opportunity to fortified. just apply so much pressure Radiant's and completely top choke top. Aster out. Because they've got... They need so much farm, and if but they don't really have any Tier 1s taken, so they're just not going to have enough room for everybody this game. Um, and that's what EG are hoping to capitalize on. Just keep the map locked down, constantly shoving all the side lanes, and just never let Aster find their footing after this terrible start that they've had. Yeah, they they need to find that footing, but like you said, EG just trying to deny that. What on the side of Aster is necessary for them to even think about coming back in this game? Because they can't be the ones who are taking fights offensively. Mm. Uh, so they need... I mean, they need to they need a BKB on this OD, but it's just going to be so far away. Uh, the first step is that they have to win a team fight using XXS. Like XXS has to get maybe a couple more levels. He's got his veil now. This Phoenix can actually be ridiculous in a team fight if he gets the right opportunity. But he has to be so careful because if he gets hit by the Puck Silence or the the Earth Spirit Grip then he's not going to do anything in a fight. Yeah, they're looking for him right now. They've got the Sinister Gaze, as well as the Frost Blast coming out. Four heroes here with the TP over from S4. And Sumail getting himself into a dominating spree as he picks up this kill on the XXS. This is... You know... All falling apart right now, and uh, Aster just trying to slow down the game, but they're constantly getting picked off by the global presence that comes out from EG with these heroes, with the Nature's Prophet, with the Illusory Orb coming over, and just all the pressure they're having with even the item picks. Soulbind, Sumail, way too fast, and outruns that ink swell. But XSS comes over, spots S4, he'll sprout, trying to get away, Bobica. Unable to do anything to stop that. The Icarus Dive comes over towards Crit, and he will be Boulder Smashed away. Rolling Boulder out, and Crit playing that perfectly to just escape. They're just running circles around them. Like, Arteezy was tanking the spin, gets the last hit on the tower. He gets out just fine. That TP from S4 was cool as a cucumber. He was not worried at all. And Aster ran all five heroes at bottom. Nobody was really farming in in that time. And EG just immediately using the, the BOTs and the global mobility of the Nature's Prophet are continuing to play this split push game. All the while the Terrorblade's farming. And once Arteezy gets enough items, he's gonna be so difficult to deal with. Like they're really relying on the the magical damage of the and like the I guess the minus attack speed from the Phoenix. But if he gets a BKB, what do they do? He's got so much armor that he's not going to die to the, the Jug, and their other two cores are 100% magic damage based, or, you know, spell based. Actually, find XSS again over towards bottom. Four heroes here, and right off that, they smoke. It's the Blink Dagger picked up by Sumail, and he's now gotten two mobility items with the Boost Travel as well as the Blink Dagger. So, yeah, it's just having the TP here for the Nature's Prophet, Having the blink as well as the boots of travel for Sumail. There is so much here in terms of mobility for oh. EG that they're able to pressure heavily. Oh my. Were you watching that? Did you watch Sumail just. There's four heroes there and he just stole the bounty rune out from underneath the Boca's nose. Oh man, that was so cool. He actually TPs over really towards good. bottom because XSS caught again. Flies just here with the Sinister Gaze. They've got the waning rift to silence him up so he's unable to move away. Supernova, Silar coming in to try and back this up. They've also got Lover, so this could be an opportunity for the side of Aster. They get themselves at least one. The Astro Imprisonment's going to lock up S4, who attempt to TP out, but there is just no chance on that. 
Lovey Lummy gets a double kill, although you know, seemingly a little bit late and almost too late with them being behind by 10,000 net worth, but anything uh, they'll take. Yeah. Oh, for sure. That's that's really nice for them. I think the Phoenix was just a little bit tankier than they expected. The last time that they ganked him, they had full time around. They uh, only brought the three heroes and just didn't have enough lockdown. Uh, they might have needed maybe some Wrath of Nature damage uh, to finish him off before the Supernova came out. But good turnaround for Aster, though. I am still extremely worried about their position in this game. Arteezy still just hitting creeps over at the tri-camp area. Um, and item progression for Aster is still fairly slow. Though OD does, I, I said that the BKB for OD was going to be the big item. He's got his Kaya, and he's going straight into a BKB now. So once he gets that, uh, his game is going to be significantly easier. But the Jug still doesn't really have a whole lot of anything, and Baboka is just going for a Shadow Blade. So he's not really going to be finding a whole lot of farm with that. This seems very much that he wants to maybe run around the map and slip push and find kills. Yeah, the problem is he couldn't exactly go for the Battle Fury there, because that's just such a slow ramp for him and yeah that, that, that would be suicide yeah yeah going going for the battle fury would just be total total suicide in the situation he, he can't afford to he's gonna he has to be confident that the od is gonna take over late game like and he just has to do everything that he can to uh, find some farm and have as much impact right now as he possibly can uh they're getting closer to a blink dagger on this fan as well so there are some tools for aster getting built up, but it's just taken such a long time. And Sumail is just everywhere, just hunting, applying so much pressure. Now look at this over top. They've also brought S4 in, and this is all, you know, even if they don't get a kill here, it's just space being made for the pressure that was coming out over bottom. What do you do if you're Aster? You're stuck in a really bad spot. The Sour comes over the God Strength Storm Hammer out on S4. The Illusory Orb going to be on top. He has an opportunity for a pretty good Dream Coil to hit on the four of these heroes. But the Chain Frost is going to be followed up from Fly. The Omnisage comes out from Bobica, who will get a kill. And there's a phase shift. Sumail able to avoid that Omnisage for the most part. The Waning Rift silencing up Bobica, who will use that spin and keep himself safe. He's also got that Healing Lord. Oh, and by the way, Arteez is hitting this tier 3. Sour comes over to try and defend, but that does leave Aster vulnerable if they were trying to exit and maybe EG wanted to go in. But Metamorphosis, Sour, I don't know if this is the fight you want to be taking. Definitely not, but Lovey Lovey comes in. He's got himself the nice sanity clips, but it's not enough to take away the mana to get the Sunder off. And Lovey Lovey now down to minimal health, ends up dying. The Soulbind comes out on two, but where's your follow-up? You've got nothing left. It's way too late of a Soulbind. Supernova comes out, but... Are you even going to get this kill on RTZ? No. You'll lose four instead. You ran at RTZ. You played yourself. And uh, EG will happily take an easy trade there. And not actually, it's not even a trade. It's just a, a four for up. Yep. Very nice. Oh, RTZ was going to back off, but they've got bottle sips and they've got a salve, so they're fine. They're going to just keep... Well, they're going to plink away a little bit. I don't think they can get too much more. Respawns are too soon. Everyone on Aster is still a relatively low level, so they do at least have that going for them. But forcing out a buyback from the Phoenix, definitely nice. Uh, XXS was working towards this Midas, but it's going to get delayed a little bit more now. And I'm not even sure the buyback was really even that necessary. Uh, Aster seemed a little bit panicked. They're just going to... I mean, you just look at Samel. He's just poking and prodding at people, whittling away their HP... Aster are trying to respond, but they just can't stop him. Arteezy's just lurking. I mean, he's got 4.5k gold after the triple kill. That was so much for him. Being swell, trying to TP out. Geomagnetic grip, and the damage is there to kill off Fenrir. And Sylar's actually in trouble too. The rolling boulder comes in, and he's stunned up. Sylar in a lot of trouble. We'll throw the storm hammer over at, to, at Fly, but there's nowhere to go. Frost Shield slows him up enough where they're able to chase and get not one, but two kills here over top. Well, that should be an easy tier two follow-up. They could probably Roche if they wanted as well. Uh, though they might wait for that until they're ready to try and go high ground. Um, yeah, Sumail's still just hounding 
Love they found one. Yeah, they found Lovey Lummy. They'll TP in S4. And the Omni Slash comes in from Bobica. It'll be just on S4, but actually pounces over to the Treant. XSS comes over. The Blade Fury's out. Lovey Lummy dead. And they'll actually trade for S4. Sumail stays nearby, near enough where he gets stunned by the popping of the egg. But while that's all happening, Arteezy's like, yeah, I I'm still playing this game. I may not have fought so much. You came to me last time, but now it's my time to come to you. Soulbind comes down. That locks him to crit, but Arteezy doesn't really quite care. He goes in past the tier threes for a moment. The Sinister Gaze comes in on an XSS. And now with the Rolling Boulder coming through from crit, all he can do is Icarus dive away. Finger dead once again. The Storm Hammer lands on a two of these heroes, but XSS is going to end up falling. Three heroes gone to the side of Aster. Make it four. They all have no buyback. And a GG in 21 minutes is called by Aster EG with an easy game two taking the series two to nothing. What a convincing performance from EG, right? Said that this was going to be the... Well, I thought this was going to be more of a test for them, but maybe EG are just looking really good. I guess we'll have to see in the in the winner bracket match because they seem to have no trouble here. Aster, something went weird. I feel like the drafting was a little bit off kilter, especially in the second game. They were... The, they were picking the heroes really quickly and it looked really confident, and then they got to the end and... Yeah, I'm not sure what happened with this whole Silar Baboka situation, but uh, they they looked really off, and EG completely capitalized. Really impressed, especially with the performance from uh, Sumail and Crit this game. Just feels like they pretty much won the game for EG all by themselves. Yeah, and it was lost at first sight for Aster. Um, you know, you see Bovica pick up a jug, and then does actually go into that position one. Something you do not see much, if at all, from Aster. He is definitely there, yeah. there for every single time, obviously, except right now. And I think that maybe that little f flub, and, and it's really not even that little, that's a major mess up if something was something else was supposed to take place in this game. And that just had them lost, had them uh, panicked, as you said, and puts EG at just a step up to start the game. And then with them playing so well, Arteezy getting free farm, 7-1-4, and 8-0 and oh for Sumail, who played it just perfectly. I mean, that was your, your when you, when people want to brag about Sumail, show him that game and show him on the puck. He did so well this game. And uh, EG take the series 2-0. We'll see who they're up against next. I know it's one nothing for Fnatic over Alliance right now. We'll be back with that second series afterwards. So, uh, any last thoughts on the series before we go to break? Uh, no, I'm just excited to see what happens in the, the next one. I think, what, Fnatic versus Alliance is still going on, but um, EG probably looking like the favorites for the group here. Uh, and it's actually a pretty important group. I was having a look at the schedule earlier because uh, the winner of this group, I think, plays up against Ehome, but the runner-up for this group plays against VP. So uh, I do think you want to want to get that number one spot here because VP are looking pretty scary. Yeah, so we'll have the winner's final up for you guys next once, of course, we know who it is. And once uh, both teams are ready, we'll be back. So I'm your caster, B-Cop, joined here by Basekip, uh, at B-Cop92 on Twitter. What's Is your Twitter just at Basekip, B-A-S-S-K-I-P? Yeah. All right, so that is it, and we'll be back in just a moment see you guys in a little bit hopefully I, i'm pretty sure the frames were much better this game my obs says zero instead of sixty thousand. so uh yeah definitely an improvement in quality there so we'll be back thanks